What's Brappin' Sled Addicts? Mike here. Uh, show you guys a little bit uh, of insight into what I do when I get a new sled in terms of setting up the suspension. So what we're going to do with this video is we're going to start and we're going to break this down and make it really easy for you. We'll start with the rear, show you guys what we do to get the rear set up, and then we'll slowly work our way forward to the front suspension. A um, couple things you'll need, so all the new machines pretty much come with the, the tool um, to make the adjustments underneath. You'll notice this sled, uh, in comparison to, to the, some of the other sleds we've had, uh, doesn't have the quick adjusters on it, so that's why we're going to be using this to adjust the spring tension underneath. Um, you'll need a tape measure as well, so when you're setting your sag, you want to go for between two and three inches of sag, so you'll need this. And what I typically do is I'll put a, a piece of tape with just a black marker, uh, just to kind of give me the same starting point to be able to measure um, the distance when we actually set the sag. So, We'll go through the motions and we'll show you guys exactly how we do this. So first thing you're going to want to do is measure your ride height with your suspension fully extended with no one on the machine. So I'm going to tape my tape measure, measure from the ground up to the mark that I pre-made on the bumper and that gives me 25 and a half. Then I'm going to ask the rider to get on the machine. Measure again. Now it's at 21 and a half. So again, your 21 and a half to 25 and a half is four inches and you want the window to be between two and three inches. So now that we've done that, what we're gonna wanna do is change the spring preload. All right guys, so as I mentioned, this sled doesn't have QA. So it's got a manual adjustment underneath the machine, just like most machines. Um, you're gonna take your tool. And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna just move it to the second setting. So you're gonna take your tool, you're gonna to clip it on, and you're gonna move it one turn, and it's all labeled. You can see all the numbers in there, and we're gonna adjust it to the second setting. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the other side, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. All right, there we go. So now that the uh, spring preload is set to two, we're gonna get the rider to get back on the machine, and we're gonna measure the sag again. So now we're at 22 versus 25 and a half. So that's three and a half inches, which is still more than we want because our target is between two to three inches. So we're gonna change the spring preload again. Okay, so now we've got uh, it set to two. Now we're gonna, gonna adjust it one more time and turn it to three. There we go, now we're re-measuring. So now we've changed the spring preload to three. We're gonna get the rider to get back on again and measure the preload again. So now we're at 22 and a half, which brings us within that two to three inch window. So this is the optimal ride height for Mike. So typically once these new sleds are delivered, you'll notice that most of the compression settings on the shocks are at about the halfway point. What I like to do when I get the sleds um, new and, and set up properly is I actually like to back off the compression all the way and usually start at all my clickers at, a, at the lowest setting, at the softest setting. Um, once I get the sled out and I ride it primarily here in Ontario, we're riding groomed trails, I typically prefer a softer ride. So I will kind of err on, on a softer compression setting. As the trail gets bumpier, if I'm hitting different trails, I'll crank the, uh, the compression up to get it to the setting that I prefer. It makes the sled, you know, rip over bumps pretty easily. But again, it's really a personal preference thing and you gotta spend a lot of time up front with the machine, testing it across different uh, terrains so that you can really get a feel for what the settings are like. Some guys, you know, they say they like to crank it all the way up to full hard. I completely disagree with that. There's pretty much no need for it. What you're aiming for is for the suspension to actually bottom out on the biggest bumps. That's what you want is you want to bottom out on those huge, huge bumps because that makes sure that you're using the, the entire uh, suspension travel to its fullest. So uh, what I'll do is I'll quickly go around the sled. I'll, I'll uh, soften up and loosen up all the compression setting to the first setting. So you've got two um, underneath here. You've got one uh, at the back underneath. So we're gonna back that right off and set that to the first click. 
You got another one up here on your FTS shock, so your front track uh, shock, and you're gonna back that one off. And just get that to the first click. So same thing with uh, your front shocks. I'll back those all the way off. Get them set to the first click. And then same thing on the left side here. All right, so I've gone around the whole machine and I basically softened up all the compression settings. So the next thing I like to work on is the front track shock. Um, typically what I do is a good buddy of mine uh, really taught me how to set this up a couple of years ago. And what we like to do is, is back that spring off all the way until it's loose. And then what you want to do for your starting point is you want to just tighten it up just a little bit until there's no more give and uh, no more give in the spring. The other thing I noticed about this machine is typically on, on some of my older sleds, I'll roll them up on the side in order to be able to do the adjustment. But this one seems pretty easy. Um, and I've actually been doing it kind of all by hand. I don't even need the actual um, shock adjuster either. So uh, pretty simple, just get on underneath, get your hand on it, back it off, and then give it a couple of turns until that spring doesn't wiggle anymore. So for the front suspension, as we mentioned before, you're gonna wanna crank down your compression dial all the way to full soft. Then once you start riding your machine, you feel if you think the front end is getting overworked, you'll start cranking that compression up until you find your uh, optimal balance. Another thing, you can adjust the spring tension by tightening this down. Again, not something me and Mike usually touch, but if you want to, it's there for you to change. Another thing you'll notice, all of the KYB shocks on the new 2021 Skidoo's no longer have the rebound clicker. Um, I don't really know why they got rid of it. The only thing that makes sense to me from the research I did is that the few shock failures they had with these KYB shocks, the failure was happening at that rebound adjustment. So by getting rid of that rebound adjustment, they can maintain the integrity of the whole shock. Another part of the suspension you definitely want to take a look at is these transfer blocks that are at the back of the suspension. So there's four settings, one, two, three, and four. This basically controls your ski lift. So if you wanna do a lot of wheelies and get your skis off the ground, you're gonna to wanna to keep it at one. And if you want more positive steering and more ski pressure, you're gonna crank that up to either two or three or sometimes even four. So how you do that is you basically just push in this red button and then you can adjust it. And remember, whatever you do to this side, you should do it to the other side as well because there's transfer blocks on both sides of the suspension. If you liked that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Sled Addicts YouTube channel where we release content on everything snowmobiles. Also, hit that bell icon so you can be updated every time we release new videos.